Good evening. My name is Susan Eaton. I'm a geologist, a geophysicist, a difficult word to say, and a journalist, but I'm also a polar snorkeler. Tonight, I'm um, delighted to present Into the Snorkel Zone, exploring the ocean from Antarctica to the Arctic. Ironic as it may seem, I'm a polar snorkeler who doesn't like the cold. In fact, I really just don't like cold water at all. But if you're going to study climate change at the poles, you have to immerse yourself in the issue. And that's what I've been doing for the past decade. Scientists describe the rainforest as the lungs of the planet. And in the same vein, the oceans are the circulatory systems of the planet. The uh, cold water currents and the warm water currents that move around the continents regulate the planet's um, climate, if you will. 97% uh, of all the water in the world is contained in the ocean, and 71% of the surface area of the planet is ocean. And from my perspective, when I talk about climate change, I prefer to use the word ocean change. However, without the endowment of, of our oceans, planet Earth would look more like Mars. As improbable as it may appear from our position here in Alberta, we are all intimately connected to the ocean. Every drop of water that we drink and uh, the oxygen in the atmosphere that we breathe is generated by the oceans. Global warming, as we've heard already, has caused ocean acidification, increasing uh, temperatures in the ocean, and sea level rise. And the glaciers across the world in, in the high latitudes, in the Andes, the Rockies, the Himalaya, and also in the polar regions are rapidly disappearing. So what to do? Uh, to do in terms of what to do as a person that can make an impact. Well, this is gonna be interesting because they're doing slides at the same time as talking. I wasn't always a polar snorkeler. In fact, I was a diver for 30 years. I dived around the planet, I led expeditions diving, but 10 years ago, my dive career came to an end, and I ended up in a hyperbaric chamber like this one. It's 10 feet long, five feet in diameter, and full of oxygen, which means if you were wearing makeup and a spark from your mascara was to light the chamber, it would blow up. And that was the advice I was given when I went in the chamber, make sure you've got no makeup on your face. I suffered a dive trauma that put me in this chamber for three days. And when I emerged from the chamber, I was no longer a diver. But as they say, out of adversity comes opportunity. That's it, Jess. My lifelong experience, relationship, up close and personal relationship with the ocean did not end in the chamber, thank goodness. After about a year of feeling sorry for myself, which I did, I decided that, hey, I'm going to become an extreme snorkeler. And for many people, most people don't know what extreme snorkeling is, so I, I describe it as extremely remote places, extremely exotic animals, extremely harsh climates, and generally and unfortunately, extremely expensive to get to polar regions. I've had some incredible up, up close and personal experiences with marine mammals in the snorkel zone. In Hudson's Bay, I've uh, been bumped by beluga whales that weigh more than 2,000 pounds. And I've listened to them play their symphonies underwater. And I've assisted the Haida Nation in Haida Gwaii, uh, counting salmon as the salmon are coming up the rivers towards their ancestral um, spawning grounds. I've been snorkeling down the river, counting salmons and dodging black bears at the sides of the rivers that are looking for their next protein-rich diet which of course was not going to be me. In Antarctica, I've come face to face with one of the scariest animals in the ocean, by all accounts, a leopard seal. And I'm going to pop that there. This animal weighs in at about 1,400 pounds, and it is the top predator in Antarctica and the Southern Ocean, with the exception of the orcas. Being charged by a leopard seal is as scary 
as being charged by grizzly bear, and I've been charged by both now. And uh, when a leopard seal charges at 1,400 pounds and opens its jaws like this, and in this particular case, with this camera, the dome port that the, uh, the cameraman is holding, this is not me, by the way, this was my mask, because I didn't have a big camera in front of me between the leopard seal and the... Uh, uh, and the scuba diver, so imagine instead of the dome port of this camera, that's my dive mask. Well, what do you do when a grizzly bear charges you? Same thing that you should probably do when a leopard seal charges you. Look away. Uh, look away, be very, very observant, but look down. Do not make eye contact. And um, count the freckles on its upper palate and inspect its triserated teeth because these animals are killing machines. That's what they do for a living. I'm going to show you a series of uh, slides here of a leopard seal dispatching a penguin in about one minute. And this is a poor Gen 2 penguin that's seen his last moments. This leopard seal is quite um, talented at eating penguins and stripping them inside out. The leopard seal is presenting the penguin to the photographer. And this last picture, which really children love when I show the pictures in school, is what's left of a penguin in about one minute of a leopard seal attacking it. So again, when you're snorkeling with large animals, I call them charismatic megafauna in the snorkel zone, it's always an adventure. I'm going to define the snorkel zone for you before we continue. And it, it's the land, sea, air, ice, interface where marine mammals come to the surface to breathe and where snorkelers obviously are at the surface and it's a place where lots of interactions happen and uh, apart from the leopard seal they're generally much more um, tame um, okay yes so into the snorkel zone <laughs> exhilarating as it is to, to study ocean change in the uh, Antarctic. And as exhilarating as it, as it is to snorkel with leopard seals and penguins, uh, the world's largest continent, Antarctica, does not have indigenous people. So after several expeditions to the Canadian Arctic, to Greenland, to Svalbard, and uh, Norway, I've determined that I'm gonna spend my time in the Canadian Arctic, because in the Canadian Arctic, uh, climate change is happening at an amazing and accelerating rate. Oceans are uh, warming, acidifying, and sea ice is disappearing. But th the main issue for spending time in the Canadian Arctic is the fact that real people live there. And it's our country, indigenous people live in the Arctic, and uh, their, their lifestyle is changing rapidly. So I've made the choice to, spend, to move to the Canadian Arctic. In the past seven years, I've gone on seven expeditions to either Antarctica or the Arctic. And this is where I'm going to hang my hat now. You can see the map there. Uh, there's a, a line, which is 3,000 kilometers long. And uh, that's the Northwest Passage snorkel relay that I'm going to undertake in 2018 and 19 with an all-female team. At the bottom of this slide is a banner that reads, uh, 10 women, one sea goddess, her name is Sedna. The Inuit goddess of the ocean from Greenland to Alaska is Sedna. She's the mother of all marine mammals as well, so it's only fitting that she's on our team. The distance is 3,000 kilometers. We'll take 100 days to do it. And uh, if we are successful in snorkeling the Northwest Passage, it will be a first, bar none. Canada's Arctic communities are suffering the impacts of both climate change and societal change, and in many cases, these two issues are linked. The Inuit depend upon uh, the ocean for sustenance and on stable sea ice to, uh, to travel during the winter. In fact, the Arctic Ocean's food chain depends upon the existence of multi-year sea ice, which scientists describe as the soil of the ecosystem. The aerial extent and the thickness of sea ice is changing rapidly in the Arctic to the extent that the Inuit are having difficulty in catching up to the new norm. Given that most Inuit don't swim, death by drowning is one of the leading causes of mortality in the Arctic. In 2014, I founded Sedna in response to my concern about uh, what's going on in the Canadian Arctic. 
And it's made up of an international team of women, uh, divers, snorkelers, medical doctors, scientists, artists, and educators. It also includes several Inuit advisors because we can't work in the Arctic without uh, partnerships with the Inuit. During the Northwest Passage Snorkel Relay, we'll conduct oceanographic studies to look at what's happening in the Arctic Ocean. We'll also visit 12 communities along the route. These communities uh, are from Pond all the way to Tuktoyaktuk. When we're in the community, we'll deliver our innovative ocean education program called Bringing the Ocean to Eye Level. And I'll speak about that in a minute. But before undertaking a 3,000 kilometer snorkel relay, one woman in, one woman out, Team Sedna has gone to the Arctic on two occasions during the past three years. We've gone to Greenland, to Baffin Island, and to Northern Labrador. The women have learned how to snorkel on pack ice using diver propulsion vehicles. And we've snorkeled between Labrador and Greenland in uh, 9,000 feet of water. When water is deeper than 50 feet, you can't see the bottom, so 9,000 is not a big deal, really. And this is what it looks like to snorkel off the, the west coast of Greenland. That's me actually in the water. Mm -hmm. In the water, and uh, I'm snorkeling a, a, a segment in a relay, and, and we went uh, up to about 35 kilometers in, in 10 hours. So we know that going 24 hours a day, we can probably do 70 kilometers. And you do the math, we can get through the Northwest Passage in about 100 days, which gives us two or three days to visit each community as we go through. The Sedna, Sedna Epic's uh, purpose, not only to, to get experience in the ocean, but its purpose to go to the Arctic is to actually work within Inuit communities, and it's part of our social license to operate in the north, to operate with uh, organizations that are Inuit, and to work with our Inuit advisors. We've delivered ocean programming to the communities of Nain and Iqaluit in the last couple of years, and we've got uh, mobile marine aquariums that we populate with sea critters. Most of the critters, the, the population is not seen because they don't swim. They don't even have a nook to toot names for these uh, critters. And we've brought robots to the Arctic where the children build robots and fly them in the ocean to see what lives underwater. In order to successfully deliver our programming, however, we need to work within community. And the in Inuit society, it's matriarchal. So we've chosen to work with women. And many people ask me why our expedition is solely women. And the, poor, the reason being is that we're working with women on societal issues. And uh, the best way to deliver the programming in these matriarchal societies is woman to woman. Our aim is to inspire and equip young women and girls to tackle societal issues and uh, climate change issues in their backyards. Um, in the summer past, just in August, July, we mentored 10 Inuit girls ages 16 to 25 and took them snorkeling for the first time in Frobisher Bay. Given that some of them didn't swim, uh, we put them in dry suits, they're very buoyant. It was quite a trust uh, transfer here to be able to take them into their backyards and show them what lives in the ocean. Ultimately, the Sedna Epic Expedition is um, trying to assist the Inuit with redefining their relationship with the ocean in a changing climate. I've got a few other photographs here. This is what it looks like uh, as Team Sedna is getting ready to snorkel across the Arctic Circle one evening at about 10 o'clock in July. We're having a powwow in the ocean. It was an idea that just came to us as we approached the Arctic Circle when the captain threatened to throw us over the side of the ship. I said, well, hold on, we'll just jump. And we'll swim across the Arctic Circle instead of motoring across. There's another photograph here of the entire team rafted together like a, a pack of sea otters. And uh, again, getting ready to snorkel the Northwest Passage. In closing, I'd like to encourage all of you to don your mask, fins, and snorkels and take the plunge. Explore the fresh waters and ocean ecosystems in your backyard, and you won't be disappointed. Whether you are landlocked on the prairies or you live on one of the three oceans in Canada, our country's very maritime future, our future as a maritime nation, depends upon its citizens protecting 
our marine ecosystems. Thank you very much. Good night.